gentlemen, ladies, technically, to an extent. Um, <laughs> so, this story or tale begins in the city slash town of Stonefield. The city of Stonefield is a relatively large village, you could call it. There's enough people there that it makes money, it's able to trade a lot, it is relatively important and noticeable, but it's not big enough to actually be called a full-fledged city. Because of this, there's a decent amount of people that come here looking for work, looking for glory. Um, but, you know, you'll probably not be remembered in the history books. So, seeing as we're starting with a posse, because apparently that's the name of a party I actually found out, um, we're going to start by introducing a portion of that posse. So, at a certain point in time, about noon, um, there's a group of four people that walk into the city of Stonefield. Um, all four of them looking a little weird in their own right, I guess. Um, so yeah, let's just start with the introductions because that's going to be the easiest way to do this. So, who of the four wants to start introducing themselves? <laughs> Not all at once. Yeah. Yeah. I will go then. So, uh, you'll see, you see Bliss Granville. He's a man of not that imposant statue stature uh he he wears his bishop robes but you see that he also has a revolver on the belt uh, around his hips and you also see that he has a pocket bible uh in his uh, in his robes so he has a small place for his pocket bible and uh, he has he's about thirty to mid thirty of age, with a uh, short black hair, just a yeah decent looking uh, priest, and he makes a gesture to uh, the person next to him to introduce himself. Uh, next to him, uh, you'll see uh, Blaze Granville, the younger brother of Bliss. Uh, he's in his early 30s. Uh, he, he has uh, a, a nice uh, cowboy hat, uh, long black hair and a coat in his hand. He's uh, shuffling, he's playing with some cards. Uh, and at his waist, uh, there's a, a revolver with some strange markings and glowings on them. Uh, he's relatively tall and slim, uh, and he looks at the person next to him and nods. Um, yes, and uh, then you see uh, the Indian, Mikamato. He's come a long way from being a war chief uh, of his tribe because he was cursed, but... Um, now he is uh, traveling with uh, uh, some two uh, brothers, were it? Were you guys brothers? Yes. Yeah, so now he's uh, traveling with two brothers who were lost, and he's bringing them back to civilization. Um, he's a little bit annoyed because every word they say he needs to translate to the shaman next to him. Um, and and before we go further, do we say Indian or Native American or I, whatever? I wrote Native American, so then I guess we are Native Americans, <laughs> the true American people. And now my shaman can, uh, yeah, announce herself in Indian. Okay. Oh no 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 no! In, I'm gonna in the truth. In the, oh, Please don't do that to in, me. Introduce myself <laughs> in uh, English, but I'm gonna talk the whole city in my uh, own uh, language because so, uh, she doesn't. She hasn't learned any language other than her own language. Yeah, true. Yeah. 
So, uh, Niowa, my name is uh, Abigail, a Native American woman with a cowboy hat with two feathers uh, in it, and on her shoulder, a white fox sits named uh, Koa. So, that's uh, everything. Wait, two white foxes? No, two what? Nee. <laughs> no, and the cowboy hats, uh, two feathers uh, sits. Ah, okay. All right, cool. So um, the four of you walk into this village. Um, there's a couple of buildings that immediately kind of jump out. You have the church kind of in the center next to this, the church. You have the, um, the mayor or the city hall, I guess you could call it. Um, there are a couple of saloons. There's a couple of uh, just regular houses, you know, pretty much what you would expect in a village like this. However, the thing is, you guys come into town, and it's a little weird, because as you're kind of looking around, you actually notice that there seems to be a little bit of excitement at this current point in time. You see a couple of people just like, some of them running away, and some of them kind of running towards something seemingly happening in the center of town at this point. Um, most of the people that you see here, except for the children, of course, are at least carrying something of like maybe a small revolver or something. Um, and even the kids sometimes seem to be carrying like maybe a dagger or something like that. Um, but at this point, everybody seems to be excited about something. Let's head towards the center, I guess. Okay, sure. Uh, what 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 did we come here to do? Uh, I just brought you guys back. So pretty much the four of you have heard about a, a job that would be uh, given at this location. So someone by the name of Jason Burns seems to be requiring some help with something. Uh, you didn't really get any additional information. So we don't know if it's a priest or whatever. Or... You don't know... Yeah. who it is but there seem to be how do i say this uh there seemed to be some authority to the message that you got seeing that and it's he's... either the mayor or or someone in the saloon or so pretty Maybe. much yeah something like that yeah. now yeah, let's go to town hall i guess sure then S okay what? <laughs> <laughs> then okay I thought you were gonna say something, and it was like den. Oh wait, is that den. weird? Is that weird language area again? <laughs> yep, yep. <laughs> oh, this is gonna be confusing. I love it. All right. Anyway, um, so as you kind of start moving more into the center of town, uh, kind of making your way to to city hall, I guess, you actually notice that uh, in front of a saloon known as, and I need to make sure that the name is uh, right. Uh, in front of a saloon known as the Fiery Whiskey, you actually see that a lot of people are kind of standing in kind of this semi-circle shape. Uh, and some of them are kind of like, oh, yeah, 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 this is going to happen. Oh, yeah. And you see like a lot of excitement and stuff going on in there. You see all of these people looking at something in the center. And as you kind of glance over, you actually see that in the center of this semicircle, there's two people kind of staring each other down at this point. The first one of them is kind of this like 40 year old dude um, who has like a small pistol to his side, who's like looking pretty angrily at, at the other person in that semicircle. Um, you know, he seems to already have like a couple already of bullet, bullet holes in like his, um, his clothing, uh, like kind of the start of a beard and just looks at the other person. And uh, the other person gets to introduce themselves. I'm just eating. <laughs> <laughs> That's how interested she is in the he's, other he's, person. He's fist I, eating? <laughs> I like your accent. Keep it up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Damn it. Great timing, dude. Great timing. <laughs> I did not know that. <laughs> <clears throat> so, um, you see a, a young woman, like 27 years old, and she starts talking. 
Um, right, let's get my best redneck accent out here. Howdy, y'all. My name's Annie Oakley. And you see, you see her standing there, typical hair of the of the era. You know, the the long hair that's hanging off the back. But highly unusually, she is wearing an armored duster and a uh, broad-brimmed uh, cowboy hat. So and you just... can see, you can just see her belt is bristling with pistol bullets, and you see a beautiful, nicely engraved uh, gold peacemaker hanging off her side in a leg holster. And uh, she's she's looking at yeah she's like like. Uh, like uh, was said she's looking at the other guy big in contempt like what what the hell is he doing here okay he just looks back and he's like well come on poppy eh? what do you think you're gonna do huh apparently he's sending you back to cockney england <laughs> <laughs> well you can certainly try <laughs> <laughs> My accent is going to change every five seconds. <laughs> the consistency of your accent marvels me. It's beautiful, I know. It's the first time I'm doing this, okay? I'm sorry. Well, how about it? Shall we do this dance or what? Sure. So, um, because we're technically at the start of sort of a Western thingy, uh, this entire situation is going to start off with a duel. Ooh, ooh nice. Can we so, play the bats? Oh, oh, yes, I want to play the bats. Sure, <laughs> by all means. There's actually a couple of people in the crowd that are like, you know, <laughs> noting down and like taking money from each other. Like, oh, who's going to survive this? Oh. So if you want to um, make a bet. So uh, uh, where are we now? At the, the town hall or the saloon? Uh, currently, you're at. The, you had to walk past the uh, the fiery whiskey saloon in order to get to the town hall. So currently, you would be standing near the saloon itself. Uh, uh, finally, um, something happening in the town. I, I I go inside the saloon and and uh, talk to the barkeeper. Okay, so you kind of see. Mikamoto just like not really interested, just walks in. <laughs> Everybody and just he, looking at this Indian like, what the and, fuck are you doing? And he he asks, "I want some of that fiery whiskey." You pretty much see the barkeep just standing there, kind of like, okay, and like kind of goes behind the counter, starts <coughs> filling up a glass. Uh, what are the other three stooges doing? Uh, I, Can I? I did- yeah, I, I want to take off my uh, cowboy hat and start uh, going around to make some bets. Okay, how uh, much? How much are you betting, and on who are you betting? Uh, I am betting on the pretty lady. Uh, okay. For uh, I don't know, five dollars. You, you literally just see one of those guys just like take your five dollars, like, look back at you like pussy. Why do you call me? I have actually no clue how much money I have left. <laughs> <laughs> ah, that doesn't help. <laughs> uh, I'll add another five. <laughs> Just takes the other five, writes your name down. Okay. You shouldn't, by the way, all our travel money that mother gave us. <laughs> that money's uh, gone long time ago, sweetie. Oh. Can I? How, how long do jewels like this usually last? Because I would like to. 18 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> 18 <laughs> seconds? That's a legitimate number I can give you. <laughs> I'm nice. afraid that's too long. <laughs> when, uh, when no one is looking, I would like to cast uh, two powers on the redneck girl. Oh shit, okay, sure. And what are you casting? I would like to cast Arcane Protection and Normal Protection. Okay. You have to make rolls for that, right? Yes. Okay, sure. So, um, first... Before you does do that... Does anyone notice bef- me? Before you <laughs> do that, make a stealth check. Oh, fuck my life. 
<clears throat> oh shit! Oh shit! Oh shit! What's what's <laughs> happening? <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> How many fours <laughs> did you just roll? <laughs> what? Sabino is stealthing. <laughs> Dude, that's insane. <laughs> you know. The draw in D and D, the Absolute. stealthy guy in Savage. Well, I think you rolled like six, five or six fours. What five, the fuck? Five fours, I did two. Dude, what the hell? Okay. Both not race. I mean, yeah, nobody sees you <laughs> casting this. <laughs> in case there was any doubt. <laughs> okay, sure, go and okay. cast your cast your shit. <laughs> so first, uh, the arcade protection. Oh, come on. <laughs> Since I'm a true believer, I can recast it. I can reroll any fate roll. Uh huh. I'll take the first one. Yeah. And uh, then my second one, uh, you should apply a minus two because I'm taking two actions uh, and I forgot to mark it. Yeah, so you got a 10. <laughs> and I'll reroll that as true believer. Okay. Not uh, loading, but I think that's a seven. Yeah, it's fine. I'll take both. Yeah, seven. Yes. So I think the twelve is with a uh, the ten is with a raise. So I don't know if yes. that does anything additional on a raise. Um, the hostile power suffer a minus four uh, penalty to affect the character. Okay. Uh, so okay. if the power so if the power causes harm, damage is also reduced uh, minus four. Okay. And normal protection is just uh, because I didn't come on stupid PDF. <laughs> A normal protection is just that she has a plus four armor. Oh God! So. So plus four to armor and minus four on everything I try to do against her? Really? Yes. That's what we're going yes. with? Okay, sure. For five rounds. Sure, 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 sure. Oh my god, I'm fucked. Okay. <clears throat> so That means I have a toughness of 11 at the moment. Yes. Just saying. And, and I have to roll with a minus four. Oh boy, this is going to be beautiful. <laughs> All right. Then for uh, the duel itself, as uh, Mikamado is getting his drink, um... So, in order to do this, the way that it works is uh, pretty much ev both players technically get a whole card to start with. Now, I'm not going to deal those out yet because I can't deal them face down in Fantasy Grounds or I haven't found out how to do that. Uh, but because of your Duelist Edge, you get three whole cards and I currently mm -hmm. have one. And then we have two rounds in which we can try to fuck each other up. <laughs> right. Great. So you can't do any attacks yet in the first two rounds, but you can try to get bonuses or or whatever to uh, or try to screw me over to improve your odds, so to speak. Would be cool if you both miss the entire. <laughs> I, I, I have this weird feeling I'm not going to be hitting this time. God. Just hitting hitting between the shoes constantly. <laughs> God. Please don't do that to me. <laughs> um, so yeah, if you want to do something... So I, I can take an action basically now. Yeah, you can take an shoot. action, but you just can't shoot yet. That's starting from round yeah, three. Yeah, I can't, I can't attack yet. Yeah, I've got the... I've don't got you the... have to walk out, out any, like back to back and then turn around? And... <laughs> uh, that's not how it works in this game. Here it's oh, just oh. like... Here pretty much you have to imagine that like the first round you hear like two bells... The second round, you hear two bells, and then, like, the last two bells is the moment where, like, the shot gets fired. Uh, I, had, I had my harmonica ready to, like... Doo -doo 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 -doo, purr, purr, purr. <laughs> Can I uh, um, take out my uh, guitar and start to play a song? Sure. <laughs> Can I play the last minute bet? Sure. I would like to put... Ten dollars also on the pretty lady. Okay. Well, Don't look at that. Mama, Holy bliss! Starting to bet. You do get the feeling that like the odds are pretty even on like both sides. So. 
even with yeah nobody notices even. this like arcane shit happening because you rolled a they 20 are, fucking two <laughs> they are completely even you're right so um so pretty much uh what do you want to do uh annie hey uh so I'm, I'm dealt an action card but i can basically decide what i do with that what that entails yeah, pretty much. Technically, like, we have to... Eh, technically, it's, like, with initiative and stuff, so technically I have to deal a card to you and a card to me. So maybe I should just quickly mm. do that. Where is he? There he is. Let's let's put my... And the card. Um, so pretty much I have to deal a card to... I'm trying to figure out the system. Give me a second. So deal... Deal. So technically for the first round... The gunman goes first. Uh, so he is going to try to intimidate you. Uh, which means he's going to make an intimidation roll. Which, if I'm not mistaken, for him is a d6. Uh, yep. That's cocked. That's beautiful. And then in response to that, you have to roll a spirit roll. And if you roll higher, then nothing happens, which I'm pretty sure you will. So this is what's known as a test. It's pretty much like he's trying to get an advantage by, like, psyching you out. Is this right? Because it's dragging along a d6 for some reason. And another, and another. Yeah, you, you rolled a... <laughs> so, because you're a wild card, you get a, a thing known as a wild die. So you get to roll an additional d6 with every uh, trait roll. Mm -hmm. uh, and if it's higher, if the result of that one is higher than what you rolled, then you get to pick that. So yes, you get to roll an additional d6 on all so of these. So now it came up with 15. So. Yeah, so you rolled a 15. So pretty much, okay. like, he just, like, looks at you very, very creepily, more than intimidatingly, and you just look back at him like, okay, what are you and doing? And start laughing, yeah. Yeah, pretty much. His ego is more bruised than anything else. <laughs> so at that point, it would be your turn. Um, so... No, I can't. Because it's uh, first and second round, you can't do anything. Um... Yeah, I'm I'm going to try and intimidate him. Okay, so make an intimidation roll. And he's gonna roll spirit against that. Ooh. Five, okay. And then his spirit <laughs> a little higher. Nice. Where's my yeah, fuck it. I'll just roll it in that's just a good inch. Okay, so he rolled a four. <laughs> so pretty much like he tries he looks very angrily at you you start laughing and like with the laugh he starts shrinking like a couple of inches like oh, she's laughing at me why is she la I don't like no no don't no he's very intimidated so pretty much in this case that would mean you get a fourth whole card which is insane <laughs> So I've got four whole cards, okay. Yeah, so pretty much if one of those four cards is higher than the card that he has, you'll get the first action in round three. And you'll get a d6 additional damage. Hey. So then uh, we are going to do the second round. So I deal two new cards where I get a seven and you get a two. <laughs> okay, then sure. Let's Let's go with that. So, he, being a little bit, like, intimidated by the fact that there's this crazy lady just laughing at him right now, <laughs> uh, is going, he's gonna, like, give a little bit of a look, and he's gonna try to figure out the best, like, way, like, kind of start calculating in his head, like, how quickly he has to shoot, kind of uses his battle techniques to figure out if he can take you on, or how he can best take you on in this battle. So he is going to do the same thing that we've done, and he's going to do a 
uh, battle smarts roll. I'm rolling beautifully right now. God damn. Oh, so you can just roll smarts the the attribute as No, he he rolled battle, which is a skill that is uh, linked oh, to okay. smarts and you now have to roll smarts in re in uh, response to that. Regular smarts that is yeah, then. Just yeah. smarts. Yep, exactly. Four that's higher. <laughs> Cuz I rolled a 2. <clears throat> So he tries to figure it out, but you like start noticing this and you kind of like move your hands a little bit, like kind of psyching him out. He's he's pissing his pants right now. That's what he's doing. So you have one more action and then we go to the uh, third round. Uh, yeah, I've, I've got the notice action, so I'm, I'm trying to see... Can I can I use that to try and figure out if I can see any any maybe like flaws in his technique? Maybe like he's got an arthritic finger or something like that. Sure, go for it. Okay, okay. okay. Holy shit! Okay, sure. Why are you people rolling so many raises? I don't like it. <laughs> he's gonna <laughs> roll smarts against that. Okay, so he rolls a five, he rolls which is lower. So you actually notice that the gun that is currently like holstered that he's gonna go for with his hands in a couple of seconds, you actually notice that there's like a couple of threads that are kind of like intertwined with the pistol itself, which makes it a little harder for him to actually draw it in one smooth motion. Which means you think you're gonna have like a couple of seconds on him before he's actually gonna be able to shoot, giving you like the possibility to get a better aim. Uh, get a little bit of better of an aim uh, off on him. Okay, now at this point, uh, Mikamato is standing uh, at the bar and is actually getting like a shot of fiery whiskey. Um, his his face uh, becomes a little bit somber. I was hoping for some more fire. <laughs> you actually see the bartender just like go behind the counter. Get a box of matches. That's more like it. And actually yes. lights the whiskey on fire. And now he's smiling like a little child. <laughs> and goes outside and then stands, stands like uh, looking at, at the, the scene. With his whiskey in the hand, which is entirely burning away. Okay. So, pretty much you come outside, and at this point, you actually hear, like, boom, boom, and that's, like, the final bell, at which point both the contestants, I guess, the duelists, draw their uh, guns. So, Annie has five cards, which is just great. <laughs> <laughs> you get to pick which one you want to use, just, you know. So, wait, how does the card thing work? So, uh, you have five whole cards. I don't know which Try. one I just dealt to you. Fuck. Um, how, how can I tell? I can't see anything on here. Uh, oh, wait. Hold up. Let me see. Oh, wait. No, I've, I've... Yeah, there we go. Actually, can you guys see this? Yes. Yes. It's yes. Oh, nice. the okay. Six of spades. Uh... So, I'm going to first deal the five cards for you. So, you have a six of spades, the two of clubs, the ten of spades, oh, ten wait, of now hearts... I'm combat tracker that's how i keep track of yeah it. that's the other way so now i'm just dealing from Ooh. another deck so those are your five cards you get to pick which one you want to use what is better higher or lower higher is better and the ace is <clears throat> the highest okay technically joker is highest but... so, so I've, I've got a five a four or two uh, yeah no, that, that's it's, what... it's the ones in the public uh thingy. oh okay yeah okay you didn't sorry uh so Joker would be higher than ten. Yeah, the the J would be higher. Jack. The Jack. Jack, sorry. sorry. Jake, jo there's two Jokers Jack, in the deck. Jack, that's Jack fine. Jack and Joker. Yeah, sorry. Jack. Okay. Um, it's a row. Jack. Yeah, so I I go for the Jack. I mean. All right, and then he gets one card, which is an eight. Which is an eight. <laughs> nice. The eighth part. <laughs> the ever so slight chance for some weird reason. He actually, like, he starts drawing started. at, like, the fifth bell shot already, which you didn't expect. Which means he gets to try to shoot first. 
at this point. Technically, he's cheating, so I can just grab out my shotgun and blast him away, can't I? <laughs> you know what? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> sure. 